I was just thinking about when they came from Ireland there. Was it your grandparents who came? Yeah, they came in 1845. They were uh, Martin Mullen and Mary O'Neill. And uh, Martin, my grandfather came from Cork, and my grandmother O'Neill came from uh, uh, Tipperary. Eh? I've been told that my grandfather looked after a group of horses for somebody, for some big shot eh, that had horses, and he he was a groom like for those horses, eh? Because Dad used to say that his his dad was used to tell him that the guy was very particular. He'd come out with a white handkerchief and wipe it over the horse to see if there was any dust left on it. Grandpa was born in 1810, and Grandma was born in 1825. Fifteen years difference, eh? I heard them say that they, on the time they came over, 1845, a sailboat, there were three months on the ocean. I think, uh, by and large, they were glad to get out of it because it was a pretty poor country, eh, at that time, eh? So I don't think there was uh, much talk of going back. I think it must have been about 1865, maybe, that they moved up to South Algona, eh? I can remember my grandmother Mullen, too. She died in 1922. See, I was only three years old when she died, eh? I can remember her on a couple of occasions. Uh, my aunt took me up to see her. She was, I think she had broke her hip or something some years before that. And she had this big white bib on, you know. And there was all little black spots all over it, you know. And uh, I wondered what the heck. And I waited there. And when Aunt Aggie finished her meal, she filled her clay pipe with shag tobacco and, and lit it up. This is where the sparks were coming from. <laughs> Smoked a pipe all her life, and she died in 97. Uh, my parents and grandparents, are, they're all buried at Cormac, eh? okay. yeah. Quite a few of them, the Irish came up around our area there, you know. The um, Mullins and the Mangans and uh, Hogan's and uh, O'Grady's and uh, all that gang, you know. My dad was Joe Mullen. Joe Mullen. And who he did was you the, he was the second youngest of the family, eh? And he married uh, my mother was Mary Ellen Hogan. I was born at uh, Cor Cormac there, eh? Yeah. At the old homestead. Well, there was five originally, but two two boys died before I was born, eh? Uh, Jimmy was two, and uh, Leonard. I called him Leonard. He died in 1918 with the flu, eh? Nearly every Sunday night, somebody would have a house dance and uh, I'll go to it, you know. My dad played the fiddle. He never danced. And my mother was a good dancer and a wonderful waltzer, you know. And your grandmother, was, your grandfather was a good, nice player, yeah, Tommy. Tommy. The fall of the year was, and Christmas time was more no, noted for these parties, eh? My cousin Lee Mullen, he used to call. Paddy Shirley was another one called. And he was a good dancer, too. But, uh, and I think Joe Walsh, he was a dancer, too. There was quite a few dancers up there at one time, you know. I used to play then with, uh, you remember Billy Kilby? Uh, he was a nice player. and. I used to play with him, and he covered up my sins quite a bit. And, uh, and Billy, he had been sick that summer, and he took up the fiddle and learned it. And he got very good at it, eh? Mm -hmm. And he could listen to a Don Messer program, eh, at supper time. And he'd walk into the living room. By the time we got in there, he was playing that tune. When you dance a square dance, there was three parts like to it. And uh, the last one was the uh, breakdown, and it was a real, eh? And the second one was a jig, eh? We were having lunch, eh? Going to 12 o'clock, and uh, 
And if there was any step dancers, they'd be asked to step dance then. I remember a story somebody told that I think his father McCormick old, and he broke into a dance one time and uh, this fellow was playing and he went over to him, he said, oh, everybody else had scooted, you know, out. He said, do you know the Lord's Prayer? No, he said, but if I whistle a few bars, I might be able to play it. <laughs> <laughs> a guy that was building the first church at Cormac, he uh, made up this, this song. He was, he was out for a walk this evening and uh, just Sunday evening, and uh, he heard a drum, eh? So he looked up, and uh, up on the hill, there was this, uh, they called him Orange Billy. Billy Tennant was his name, eh? And he had a group of guys with him, and they were marching down the road to the drum, eh? Uh, at Cormac then, and he made up a song for it. Uh, Come all you young fellows, wherever you may be, I'll have you pay attention and listen unto me. To tell you of this gallant crew, it's now I will begin. There was Ned and Paddy Bennett, likewise their chum Dan Quinn. Jack Tennant played the fiddle, Tom Connors carried the flag. Jim Shirley played the tambourine and made a dismal noise. Jack Sheely followed after and whistled the Protestant boys. Now to conclude and finish, I have no more to say. May God forgive old Billy for leading those youths astray. For when they'll reach the golden gates, to grief they'll surely come. St. Peter, he will say to them, go down to Billy's drum. There was some animosity between them and the guys on the flat over girls or something like this, eh? I remember I tell about a dance one time up that there was a Kearney family up near Brudenell, eh? And the lads, well, there was one boy on the farm, eh? But the lads were all working in the lumber camps, eh? and they were home for Christmas. So they decided to have a dance that Sunday night, you know. And of course, there was no such thing as open liquor then, but the Kearney lads always had a bottle with them. And they invited this old bachelor, lived near them, Jack Colton. He never danced or anything, but he came over anyway. And uh, Billy Kearney got hold of him after, and, and he gave him a good shot of liquor, eh? And old Jack wasn't used to liquor at all, eh? And old Jack went out in the kitchen on a sofa and fell asleep. And he was a tall man, about six foot four, this uh, old Jack Colton, eh? And you get lying down, you look longer, you know? So anyway, uh, the dance went on and they finally ended up and the guy, the Kearney lads were all out helping people hitch up their horses and get ready to go home. And they come back in, this Billy Kearney, he stuttered, you know. And uh, they come back into the house and old Jack was still asleep on the sofa, you know. And Billy says, oh, look, lads, he said, somebody forgot their whip. <laughs> That's me. Yeah.